Good evening and welcome to Paul T's World. And in this video, we're going to have a look at the feed, the fertilizer I give my plants each year. Did you feed the plants this spring? Because that will be a good time to feed the plants. A little bit late now. However, another good time to feed the plants is in midsummer. So it's mid July and you don't really want to be feeding into August or past August because what you don't want is the plants to put up some nice but soft growth just before autumn and winter. So those are the two good times to feed. Of course, some plants do want to be fed continually, particularly the tropical plants, the Brugmansias, the cannas, um, tomato plants that want to be fed each week. But in general, most plants uh, are okay with spring and midsummer. These are the fertilizers I buy. This isn't a promotion. No one pays me to do anything. No one sends me anything. I go and buy what I want. And this is what I buy. Now you don't need all these. These are the types of things I use. And I usually have one of these on the go at all times. And so depending what I want to water and feed depends on splashing a little bit of this in the watering can. So let's have a look at the kind of things that I use. But as well as these fertilizers, I'm going to show you towards the end the feed that I use where you feed the soil, which in actual fact is better than feeding the plants. And I've got something I found earlier this year that is perfect for amending the soil, improving the soil, feeding the plants, uh, and I'll show you that later. So let's see what we've got right now. So for example, this is for the ericaceous plants. So the ericaceous plants are the pyrus, the azaleas, camellias, rhododendrons. Uh, so because I've got a lot of rhododendrons and a lot of eric ericaceous loving plants, I do use a little bit of this. But for general feed, I like this one. And what's this? Maxi crop plant growth stimulant. That sounds pretty good. Organic as well. So that one's a good one for generally feeding all sorts of plants. Uh, but if they're flowering or you want to encourage them to flower, that's when you could be using tomorite. And I use tomorite quite a lot. Going back to the ericaceous plants, sequestered iron. This is very good for allowing the ericaceous plants to unlock the nutrients that are in the soil. So they need iron. And in fact, when you see ericaceous plants such as camellias, uh, rhododendrons in particular, you sometimes notice a yellowing of the leaves rather than the beautiful glossy leaves that you want. And often that's a shortage of iron. So sequestered iron is quite good for that. And in fact, I've got a rhododendron in the front garden that has got yellowing leaves. It flowers okay, but I'm going to see with the help of sequestered iron, if I can turn those leaves far more green and glossy. Staying on ericaceous plants, what's this? After plant, I saw this and I bought it. Feed and biostimulant. RHS, Royal Horticultural Society, approved. So it's got to be good, hasn't it? So again, you don't need all of these, but I do have them and just use a little bit here and there, depending on what I want. And there's another one here that I bought. This, this is manufactured in Britain. I think it's Lancashire in the northwest of uh, England. And EcoGrow. And this absolutely smells, it smells, <laughs> yeah, it smells. So you kind of think the more it smells, the more it's going to do that the goodness is in there for the plants. And so I use that quite a lot. That one is a little bit expensive, I feel, but I do, I do like to use that. I've got links, I've got Amazon links down below in the description. So if you clicked on one of my links and then bought the item or anything else for that matter, 
I may get a small commission with no extra charge to you. So feel free to look in the description for the links to some of these items. In fact, I've actually bought all these from Amazon. Now, as I said earlier, far better than just feeding fertilizer is to feed the soil. So I love compost, manure. And the best compost you can have is the free compost you can make yourself. I'll do a video on making compost. I just make it the easy way. Making compost is the cheapest and best thing you can do for your garden, for improving the soil and feeding the plants. However, I do buy various composts, manure, etc., for when I'm potting up plants or when I'm planting shrubs in the ground, as I want to give them a lot of nutrients to begin with, particularly if I'm planting in spring and I want nutrients there for them to get going right the way through the summer until we get to July and I might give them another good feed. So let's see what we've got here. Now, first of all, I've got a lot of ericaceous plants, so I buy ericaceous compost. Now, the homemade compost is actually slightly ericaceous with a low-ish pH. Uh, we're starting to get now the peat-free composts, and this, in fact, is farmyard manure. Sometimes when you get farmyard manure from the farm, there may be all sorts of seeds in there, and it can be tricky depending. Although I've used a lot myself, I do like to use manure, and I have been buying some in bags. Obviously, if you have access to horse manure, particularly if you know the source, then that's ideal and free. And this is the manure I've bought in the last six months. So what have we got here? Organic blend farmyard manure. And what I like about this manure, let's just get some out, is it's very crumbly. So you don't end up with blocks of it that go dry and never actually break down. So that's nice, nice pliable manure. And in fact, it doesn't smell at all. We'll move over to this compost, multi-purpose compost. Now, I've only just discovered this, Vitax Q4. And what I like about this is it's, it's quite fluffy and again, very, um, there's no lumps in it. So that can be mixed with some farmyard manure. And if I'm using a pot and putting things in a pot, I do like to use some John Innes number three. And that is because it's well drained, perhaps even a little bit sandy. And what you don't want to do is use a lot of manure and a lot of compost in a large pot that a plant cannot dry out so its roots start getting soaked and in fact i made that mistake the other day i was repotting a tetrapanax they're big or they can be big and i was treating it like a canna or a brugmansia thinking you can give it whatever you like and its roots will get going but this tetrapanax it actually sulked because it wasn't well draining enough and there weren't enough roots. So I've actually taken it out of the larger pot, put it in a smaller pot and used plenty of John Innes number three so that it's well drained. Once the plant has got really good strong roots, then I can put more feed in there. Now the feed and compost and manure that I discovered earlier this year is this one here. And I think it's the bee's knees. Look at this. Now this again is Vitax and it's called 6X. And let's see what it says. It says natural plant feed, soil conditioner. Oh, and I do like this. Again, it's very uh, fine. So it doesn't settle into lumps in the sun or dry out. It smells a little bit like farmyard manure, which it, it kind of is. I'm really impressed with this stuff. Uh, and I'll read out some of the things that it's supposed to do. And I believe it does. But my sister, her soil is clay. And this stuff breaks down clay. So um, I've recommended it to her as well. Buy this off Amazon too. So it turns up one or two bags. By the way, if you do buy this off Amazon, 
they sell it at one bag, two bags or three bags. Now it's often cheaper to just buy one bag. It's, it's less than half the price of two bags. So if you do fancy this stuff, and I do recommend it, do check that it's probably better off to just buy one bag. Let's see what it says. Well, first of all, it's saying uh, you can do your lawns with it. It breaks down clay and conditions the uh, soil. You can sow seeds in it. I'm not sure if I would sow seeds in it because I think it's quite strong, but that's what they say. Um, seed trays and potting, transplanting, pot plants, hanging baskets and window boxes. What won't this do? Vegetables and fruit, composting, spread, uh, kinks your ways to activate heat. No, don't, don't use it as compost. Do your own compost. You don't need to put any, you don't need to buy anything to put into a compost bin. So we'll forget that. Liquid feed. Now this is interesting actually putting some of this and adding water to it and leaving it and then using it as, as a liquid feed. I quite like that actually. Uh, flowers and mulching the bed. Roses, I'd imagine it'd be really good for roses. Rhododent, now this is interesting. Now this is one of the best bits of this um, bag of, what do they call it, compost manure, is that it's good for ericaceous plants. So that caught my attention straight away. And this is what it says. Rhododendrons, azaleas, camellias, and ericas. 6X, that's this stuff, has no added lime, making it suitable for lime haters. And that's all the ericaceous plants, they hate lime. I think they need to send me some free stuff because I'm really promoting this, but I'm talking about it because it's what I use, it's what I buy, and yeah, I think it's good. And in fact, when I did the lawn bed just over there the other year, before I put in all the plug plants, I actually put about two or three inches of this 6X Vitax stuff uh, on there. And so I knew there was good feed on that bed because of course my soil is sandy and I've got to add something uh, with a bit of body in it to keep the plants happy, particularly in a heat wave like this that we're having in Britain. I hope that's been of interest to you and you'll be feeding your plants quickly in midsummer before it's too late for the year. And I'll see you next time in Paul T's world. Bye.